Yes, sir. Good morning. And uh, good morning to uh, ministers, uh, chiefs of defense, and teams from the UDCG. Let me extend a warm welcome to our distinguished ministers and chiefs of defense. And thank you for convening for today's... Hi, we have, somebody has a hot mic. Uh, could I ask everyone to uh, check and, and mute yourself at this time? Thank you. Uh, let me welcome you to the 18th meeting of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. I'm Celeste Wallander, Assistant Secretary of Defense for Policy, and I will serve as facilitators for facilitator for today's contact group. Uh, I would like to welcome Minister Umarov of Ukraine. We value your presence here with your team at the UDCG, and we look forward to hearing from you shortly. But please first let me introduce Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin to deliver introductory remarks. Mr. Secretary, over to you. Thanks, Assist Assistant Secretary Wallander. Good day, everyone. Uh, thanks for working across time zones uh, to join us for the 18th meeting of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. We're eager to enter this new year with new energy. And we're all here to reaffirm our support for our free, secure, and sovereign Ukraine. And to ensure that we continue to get Ukraine the capabilities that it needs for the winter and beyond. Ukraine is not alone. Around the world, Ukraine's friends have stepped up to help Ukraine's brave troops resist Putin's aggression. And we formed an historic international coalition rooted in shared interests and common principles. And the United States remains determined to support Ukraine in its fight for freedom. I'm especially glad that we're joined today by my friend, Ukrainian Defense Minister Umerov. Rustem, we look forward to hearing your report from the battlefield. Ukraine's fight is important for all of our countries. Ukraine's incredibly brave troops are continuing their battle against the Kremlin's invaders, against the vast front line in Ukraine's east and south in bitter winter weather. And Ukraine's defenders continue to inflict significant losses on the Kremlin's forces. Putin continues to sacrifice staggering numbers of Ru Russian troops in his rash and reckless war of choice. And Putin hopes that missiles and drones will demoralize the Ukrainian people and break the fighting spirit of the Ukrainian military. So I urge this group to dig deep, to provide Ukraine with more life-saving ground-based air defense systems and interceptors. And Ukraine has answered Putin's cruelty with courage and defiance. After almost two years of war, Ukraine's people and troops stand strong against Russian aggression and occupation. Russia's military has been badly weakened and demoralized. Russia's military continues to, again, make a significant sacrifices. And Ukraine has taken back more than half of the sovereign territory grabbed by Russia since this unprovoked invasion. So let's be clear. Our support for Ukraine's struggle against tyranny makes all of our countries more secure. If we lose our nerve, if we flinch, if we fail to deter other would-be aggressors, we will only invite even more bloodshed and more chaos. So a sovereign and secure Ukraine is critical to global security, and we must not waver in our support for Ukraine. On December 27th, the United States announced an additional $250 million package to help meet Ukraine's urgent security needs. The package includes life-saving air defense munitions, air defense system components, ammunition for HIMARS, anti-armor munitions, 155 millimeter and 105 millimeter artillery ammunition, and medical equipment. The United States continues to work hard to monitor and account for U.S. security assistance delivered to Ukraine. And we've seen no credible evidence of the misuse or illicit diversion of American equipment provided to Ukraine 
But what we do see is Ukraine using the capabilities that we provided to defend itself against Russian aggression. Now, I want to take a few minutes to commend the allies and partners who have risen to the moment and announced important new long-term security assistance packages since we last met. This includes significant announcements by Estonia, Germany, Latvia, Lithuania, the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. And so taken together, these commitments will amount to billions of dollars in additional military aid for Ukraine. We must continue to focus both on Ukraine's immediate battlefield needs and on helping Ukraine to strengthen, modernize, and sustain its defense forces for the long haul. And that's why the United States hosted the Ukraine Defense Industrial Base Conference in Washington last month with the goal of ushering in a new era of cooperation to meet Ukraine's long-term security needs. We remain committed to strengthening Ukraine's defense industrial base, both to in intensify Ukraine's current fight and to boost its long-term deterrence. Our, our allies and partners are working proudly beside us. And the members of this contact group have shown a profound and principled commitment to Ukraine's enduring security. I'm especially grateful to our allies and partners for your commitment to leading this contact group's capability coalitions. And that includes Denmark, Estonia, France, Germany, Lithuania, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, and the United Kingdom. Together, our allies and partners have established six capability coalitions to support Ukraine's air force, ground-based air defenses, artillery, maritime security, demining, and information technology. And so we've made impressive progress since our last meeting. And I'm proud that the United States is co-leading the Artillery Capability Coalition along with France, and also co-leading the Air Force Capability Coalition alongside Denmark and the Netherlands. And that's just another reminder of how much we can do when we come together. The security of the entire international community is on the line in Ukraine's fight. And I am more determined than ever to work with our allies and partners to support Ukraine and to get the job done. So thanks for joining us. And I'll pass it back now to Assistant Secretary Wallander and we'll pause while our friend from the media depart.